Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're fitting an inlet adapter onto the GE engine to fit the GTE plenum onto it. Coming right up, stay tuned. So most of you would have already seen this and a lot of you have already purchased this. I've sold a truck ton of these things. So today I'm finally going to tell you how to put the thing on. I'm sure most people have already got it on anyway. But it's quite a simple procedure. But you do have to do a little bit of work yourself. So I'll pull this one off so we can put it back on. After that I'm also going to show you how to use your GE loom and wire it into this. So we shouldn't need to change many wires at all. We need to hook up the throttle position sensor, the map sensor and the idle air control valve. That's it. Let's get going. So this is just a version one, one of these brackets that I made a long time ago. It's just a scrappy one. They look a lot better than this. They're a lot more refined than this one now. But anyway, let's put this one on. It's the only one I have left. I sold everything. These may or may not be in stock at the moment. They go in and out of stock all the time. So just check my website down below and you'll see if they're in stock or not. I usually get them cut in lots of 30. So once the 30 runs out, there's about a two week, three week wait in between. And then there's another 30 back in stock. All right. Okay, so when you get the kit from me, you're gonna of course have the bracket and there's gonna be 10 bolts that come with it. They're all different lengths. First of all, you've got two studs or two grub screws. They're going to go one here, one here. There is already grub screws in there. You need to wind the original ones out that are too short and put these 45 mil or 50 mil ones in place. Leave your bottom manifold on. You don't need to touch the bottom and there's nothing to do on this part at all. Just make sure you pull off the gasket. No gaskets are going to be used at all on this. We're going to use silicon instead. Just clean up the surface. Make sure that the surface is nice and clean. That's all you have to do to that. I'm saying that mine's disgustingly grubby at the moment because I've had silicon on it to pressure test it. I've pressure tested this adapter on here up to 100 psi and it did not leak at all so it works perfectly. Also what I give you is this sheet. This is the full instructions. On one side is showing you everything that came with the kit and all the bolt lengths which is very important and on the other side is how to actually fit it and what you have to do to fit it. I'll post that up in colour uh, and on the website there's a picture of this in colour and you can blow it up as large as you like but you can use this video as well now. So our bolt lengths here, they're all different, but these ones here, the two long ones, obviously are going down the long chutes. Then you've got 40mm length ones here and here, 25mm length here. This is also a 25, but this bottom bolt here, at the bottom, I have ground it right down, so it slips past a part of the manifold to fit in. And then you've just got two 25s up the top here as well. And then the two grub screws, of course, which you've put in there. So that's what comes with the kit. All right. Next, you have to go out and buy yourself a GTE plenum. Off, yes, a 2JZ GTE. Doesn't matter if it's an Arista or a Supra. It's most probably going to be off an Arista because the Supra ones are pretty hard to find. It doesn't matter if it's USDM or JDM, but you want really the JDM one, preferably because it's got the map sensor on it. But anyway, here it is, and we have to do some work on this. So, there is some ports that we need to shave. The two ports on the outside here, and the two down here. We just have to take a little bit of material, one millimetre out, and I have drawn this on the fitting instructions. So here it is here, and it explains the arrows there of where to take out the material. You simply just use a round file, and take it from the outside edge of there, the outside edge of the other side and then on the bottom you take it from the inside edge. Inside edge, inside edge, outside edge, outside edge. Does that make sense? Just one mil, just so it fits on. Then you can test fit it each time without the adapter. So just drop it down without, with no adapter on. And you'll see that just slides on like that. Okay, let's take that back off. I need to tell you the most important thing with this 
I state this everywhere that I sell this adapter, but it is 35 millimeters higher and 35 millimeters wider than the GTE one. So you might need to measure that, okay? So in the Supra, it does hit on a little bit of the bonnet, but it's only this throttle mechanism here that hits. I believe you can whack that off there. If you want to, you can just make a little indentation in one of the brackets inside the bonnet. I'll show you how to do that. It might be in the same video, it might be in another video, but this will go under the bonnet of a Supra, there's no doubt, but you'll have to do some work to get it under there. Any other car, it should go under pretty easy. Definitely the SC has a rise in the bonnet there, so it fits under but the Supra has a dip in the bonnet there, that's the difference. Think guys, 300s, etc. It should fit pretty easy. It might be very, very close, but if you trim this bit off the throttle mechanism, these little sticking up parts, then it should fit. So after you've done the work trimming the holes in the GTE plenum, you've got this cleaned up and you've wound your studs in here. You want to take some silicon. This here is ultra gray from Permatech and you can use other ones as well anything that says intake manifold on it but this is the one that i prefer to use this is good stuff i don't include it in the kit you'll have to buy that one yourself but remember you're saving on the price of two gaskets i was originally putting a, a ge gasket there and on the other side of the adapter a gte gasket it doesn't work like that you need to just use it flat surface with this so you're saving money on both gaskets that you would have had to originally buy so Get this stuff out and actually it's probably better to put it on the adapter itself on each side so you got to do both sides just a little wee bit just a very thin film of silicon onto it then we're going to pop the adapter on so i'll just wind these screws out let's pop it on now it can sort of be deceptive it can go on either way so you want to make sure that your ports are lining up so there's tapered ports here and simply put it on and if it looks right feel inside there there that's the wrong way around i can see that right now because the ports are nowhere near lining up they're opposite of lining up so take it back off spin it around take the bolt out put it on again voila you can feel that's nice and smooth all of the ports are lining up they're meeting in with the ge bottom manifold that means that the other side of course will match up with the gte it's not going to match one side and not the other so you know you've got it on the right way there now another thing i had a message from a guy that had bought one and he said that it had a slight bend in it basically when i get these cut out these are not cnc cut if I sold these CNC cut, they would be 500 bucks a pop and there wouldn't be any point buying them in the first place. These are laser cut and then I shape all the holes. There's a bit of hard work done to it. And that's how I can sell them for only 185 Australian dollars with all the bolts and everything. So it doesn't matter if there's a little warp, a heat warp in there. They act like a giant gasket. They are a giant gasket. Pop the thing on, it's bolted between two hard surfaces that pull it together it's just aluminium it just straightens it up straight away as long as the surface is flat then it doesn't matter if there's a little warp in it okay just put the thing on it will work i guarantee it it's also not a fashion show about what the thing looks like i've shined it up here but then i wash off the polish because otherwise the silicon won't stick properly to where i've buffed it so i don't want to buff it too much that's just to make it look pretty but even if there's a little scratch here and there on it, it's not going to do anything. This is function over fashion. All right, so we've got that on. We've got our silicon on the front. We've got our silicon on here. Now you can put one of these in if you want to, the little wee trimmed one down the bottom. That'll hold in place. You can also get these two and put them in the top. Don't do them up tight yet though. So just loosely, these are the 25mm bolts, don't do them up tight by any means. We want everything to be on before we do it up tight. So it can sort of, still sort of have a bit of slack and move about. Let's get the other bit. Now let's pop this on. Down like that. 
Now the washers that I've put onto the bolts, they're very important for the depth. Because it's only 10 mil thick adapter, we want to use maximum thread material to bolt it in there. Okay, so these long ones have one washer on them each, and these go down the deep holes. One there, one over here. We might need a bit of moving about to get them all started. That's why you don't do them up tight yet. Now you can put the others in. So this little 25 mil with the two washers on it goes just in the very center of the plenum. See that one? Now the 240 mils. Two little nuts, just your standard nuts that came with your engine. Pop those onto the studs at each end. This one's a little bit hidden. So these two are 13 mils, the long ones. Again, just sort of bolt them all down evenly. Do some up, do others up. Now the two hard ones to get are the two at the back here. 12 mil ring spanner to get those. Now the two back ones. That's it. You're done. It's all on. So now we basically want to do wiring. Okay, so the things that are going to be mainly different on our wiring loom is going to be the TPS, which is right here. Then the idle control valve right here the map sensor right here and the indicated air temp sensor right here. So we're going to get our GE loom and I'm going to fit it up to this engine and basically make those connectors fit from the GE loom. Okay so this is what I've done is I've taken the GTE intake plenum back off and I've left the GE bottom runners on there and then I have laid my GE out of my natural aspirated Supra wiring harness across the top of the lower runners and then it sits across the top of the engine right here. Over here is a lot of important things. This is my cam trigger system, dual cam trigger system that runs through here. So I don't want any wires going through here anymore. And luckily we don't need any of them. All we need is our alternator wires that go down here and one wire for the O2 sensor. There is a couple of other little wires but all in all we can reduce this drastically because this here is for your idle control valve, which is on the GTE plenum. This has to go all the way back to here. This here, coming from this side of the loom, this is your TPS, your throttle position sensor. This does fit. We're gonna loop that through and it does fit without even unplugging anything. You just have to undo a little bit of the loom. This here is the distributor plug we're not running any distributor. If you've gone with a forward facing intake plenum then chances are you are going to be running coil on plug and you want to do the same as me as get rid of the distributor. You can run my dual cam trigger system which also has wiring going down to the crank trigger as well and then we can annihilate all of this wiring. So right now we're going to unpick all of this front plastic casing here. This might seem daunting but trust me it's quite simple. I haven't done this before but I've had this all planned in my head. So all we need is a tiny little screwdriver like this and we're going to unpick this plastic cover and then we'll pull back the wires. This one right here you simply just put the screwdriver down the top of the clip and push the clip over the top. There you go that's unclipped that. So do that with all of them. Okay, so this is what we're left with now. You can see that all the wires are exposed and we can simply roll those back so straight away. That there is our idle control valve or stepper motor. Let's just pull that right back now. That's one done. Look, that will even reach straight from there. So all we're going to do is reroute that in a minute. We'll put some nice sleeve over the top of it. 
so let's just hang that down that's one gone next is the distributor four pin plug here and we don't need to distribute anymore so undo the piece of tape there look at that shielded cable folds straight back perfect also down on the same little loom we've got this thing here this spiky looking thing this usually goes into your air intake it's some sort of little indicated air temp sensor for the naturally aspirated engine but we don't want to use that one we want to use the one on the GTE manifold so I've got a few spare looms lying around and I have simply just cut a connector plug off one of those spare looms and I'm going to replace this thing here so I can plug it into the GTE ECU plenum so on the JDM model this is easy we have got a pink wire with a blue stripe or a purple stripe, something like that, and then, then a, a brown wire with a black stripe. You simply cut these ones that we pulled from the other side loom with the spiky thing on it, cut these two wires, and the pink or purple stripe goes into the left-hand side of the connector if you're looking at the back of it. It will go on the left-hand side. Or it's ECU ground, which is pin 65, I think. The other one, my brown wire with a black stripe, goes to the right hand side of the connector plug looking from the back of it. USDM guys, you have this large connector that goes to your MAF sensor. You need to split the wires from this to run the JDM MAP sensor and indicated air temp sensor. Here's a diagram of the map sensor wires which are located to the left of the connector from behind. The indicated air temp wires are the two to the right. Just use the same procedure as I am to transfer the wires to the intake side of the engine. Then you must swap pin 66 to pin 62 on the ECU connector plug. For the rest of this we do want to keep all this but we don't want to keep this big bulky piece of junk here. We can easily take that out of there and just put some expandable braided sleeve over the top of it. I'll probably actually leave that bit there and cut this piece of plastic about here. That's plenty far enough, that's gone right back. So happy with that, that's good. That one is for the idle control stepper motor. This is for your indicated air temp sensor, which will need the new connector on it. Done. And then that one there is of course the old distributor wiring. And I will tidy up all that. Next is the TPS. I don't want you all to get frightened here. Throttle position sensor on the GE comes up this side. We need to make this come all the way over and plug into right about here of our GTE manifold. Now it does fit, but the pins are different on the GE compared to the GTE. We need to reverse these four pins. Now this is not hard, this is actually very easy. All we need is this, a little de-pinning tool. Basically it's just a tiny little screwdriver and this will unpin everything on the Toyota engines. All we do to change this, we're gonna swap them around. Number four over here pin is gonna go to number one pin. Number one pin is gonna go to number four pin. Number three pin is gonna go to number two pin. And number two pin is gonna go to number three pin. Now that I've got that on video, I won't have to remember it again hopefully all we do to unpin this is we just put our little de-pinning tool in here pull up the yellow piece be very gentle if this is an old connector you don't want to bust any of this come on you can do so all you do is just put it in and push down just at the end of the connector be very gentle with it doesn't take much and the, the little pin will pull out of the back okay i think we've got all four pins there Let's swap them around. So, I've loosened all of them. They're all going to pull out at once. There's our four pins. We've got to be very careful here. So, first of all, let's swap over the two middle ones. So, two goes to three and three goes to two. Just like that. Now, I've got to swap over the two outside ones. So, let's pull that one. Put it right over to here and pull the brown one back to there that's it there so now we have the same as on a GTE loom 
I've tested all these with the multimeter by the way on an Arista loom and on the Supra loom. Um, wire colors may be different though but basically you, you have to swap them all around. And I'm gonna thread it through this hole up here. There's a hole right in between there if you can see that. We'll put that through first. There you go, it's through. So if you can see that, just those wires right there going in between this ear hose and the corner bolt hole. So here's our TPS wires and bingo, we have TPS done, hooked up. Another thing we took back here of course was our idle ear control valve, so our idle valve with the stepper motor right here. So that can now plug into there. The other thing that we need to do is the map sensor. So our map sensor here, we want to just relocate this. So we'll pull that off there. It was bolted just to here like that. We're going to take that and simply bolt it onto the back of the intake plenum right here. So there it is there, I've just simply bolted that on and then make sure of course you run your ear hoses back to the appropriate places. You can put it anywhere but that's where I choose to put it because then you have got your map sensor right here on your harness and that can now simply reach and plug in without moving any wiring. Done. All right now I'm just going to chop this off and we can tape it to that. All right, now I'm going to cut a piece of expandable braid. So I'll just measure it to length. And this is what I'm going to cover my wires with. So if I just poke it around there roughly, it does shorten the stuff as you sort of stretch it and expands. And everything's going to split basically right about here. So that there is roughly my length. There we go, that's my piece of expandable braid. So I've completely finished the wiring. We have turned the GE loom into a GTE loom now. So all we have done to recap is basically take some of the wires from this side, we've rerouted them back here, i.e. the idle speed control valve and the indicated air temp sensor. Then I've done all these up. Again, I've dulled mine up. You don't have to do that. You can put on anything and I've routed it under here. So let's have a close look. Okay, so that's everything done. We've got our indicated air temp sensor there that can plug in now. We've got our idle air control valve there. We've got at the back of the intake plenum our map sensor done. Our TPS is done over here, plugged in. The only thing we had to put a new plug on, a connector plug, is this. The indicated air temp sensor. Everything else can be stripped, just de-loomed and sent back and plugged straight in. Of course you've got to change those terminals over in the TPS. Then combined with that, we have this. This is my cam trigger sensor kit. I'm not debuting this right now, I've still got to test this, but I'm just giving you a very quick sneak peek. These are very long earth wires. I'm not sure whether I'm going to earth it at the front or at the rear or into the ECU, but anyway. So these two connector plugs go straight into the two cam sensors. One there, one there. These will be labeled. They have to go into the correct side, of course. That one there. And then this one is for the crank sensor. So all this is plug and play. That will run down the side here to the crank sensor in the bottom. This runs along combined with the coil on plug harness that I'm sure you've already seen in my last video. Just strings right to the side of the coil on plug harness. Then you run those through the firewall 
and then you have completed your GE to GTE loom. You can start the car on a GTE ECU or a standalone plug and play ECU and the car's gonna drive away. You've completed it without spending a thousand dollars on a new engine loom or trying to find an engine loom. This is all plug and play and you can use your GE loom. You don't even have to take it out of the car. So folks, thank you so much for watching. My name is Clayton Carlisle. This is Super V World and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.